Hey everyone, it's Tammy and I want to thank you very much for being a part of this journey. I'm going to start off by saying that, I usually finish by saying that, but I really want to emphasize that I'm really excited about new subscribers and people sharing and talking about this and there's just been a lot going on um, in the last couple of months. Um, it's been a very interesting trend, so to speak. So just, just thank you for being here and welcome to those who have recently joined. I look forward to um, sharing more and more with you. If you have questions about anything in a general sense, by all means, let me know. I'm ha oh, pardon me. I'm happy to um, discuss that with you. I have to say that I've been watching a couple of videos from other parts of the world in the southern hemisphere and it's just really strange for me to know that today is July 14th in the United States 2019 which is hot it's over 100 degrees here right now and it's basically sleeveless and hair up and I'm watching videos in the southern hemisphere and everybody's bundled up <laughs> it's just hard for me to wrap my head around being really cold in July but um Anyway, that's just the way the world is, and it's just really fun to be able to see the different aspects um, of life and um, the way we're all participating in this world. So, um, that said, for those of you who are new to me, I am the founder of Synergescence, which is based on 30 plus years of um, research, genetic studies, biochemistry, um, organic chemistry, pharmacology. It's a compilation of information and um, about essential oils primarily, although I do talk somewhat about nutrition because essential oils do not contain nutrients. They are signaling molecules. They contain chemicals, basically, that are signaling molecules, <clears throat> more specifically. And what do I mean by uh, signaling molecule? Well, those are chemicals that have the ability to influence genetic activity. And we currently have over 45 million chemicals being used around the world. And the majority of them being lipophilic. Lipophilic means it has the ability to affect genetic activity, hence the signaling molecule. Essential oils are lipophilic. So with millions of chemicals, man-made chemicals having the ability to influence <clears throat> human health, 70,000 of them plus have been confirmed as endocrine disruptors. This means the body is basically under attack. It's at war with the environment and it's faring pretty well considering the fact that most of us are um, alive <laughs> if we're watching this. So our body's doing what it's meant to do, it's designed to do, but it's essentially at war, and it's because of these chemicals. And I talk about essential oils because they are, in fact, part of the chemical world that we are facing, and they have the ability to help us. Now, a little bit about me. Uh, like I said, this is 30 years worth of work. I have a background in pharmacology. I've, cre I've um, created the synergescence based on science. Um... I'm a voice for essential oils, and I feel like my mission is to um, influence people to begin including them in their daily life in a more mindful um, way. And what I mean by that is understanding that genetically we're all wired different. We are wired similarly, but we're also wired differently. And learning how to incorporate them into our everyday life. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. But the bottom line is it's going to be um, make a big difference in the quality of your life. It may not extend your life, but it'll definitely in, in, enhance the quality of your life. Um, I know there's a lot of in, essential oil enthusiasts. And as I, you know, as I mentioned, I feel like my mission is to kind of change the perspective a little bit, kind of introduce other thoughts that would potentially influence a change in perspective. Let's put it that way. I can't force anybody to change, but I am here to share what I've learned. In fact, that said, I've just recently published my first book on, on Amazon Kindle. Um, it's available. That link is in the description box. It's on. It's called Ranking is um, the Ranking the, uh, the Best Essential Oils for Sleep. And it's a clinical perspective on how to basically per personalize it for yourself. Um, I'm going to 
launch a printed copy here fairly soon. But um, and I did introduce the uh, one of the original versions of it in my Aromatherapy is a Lifestyle course on Facebook or group on Facebook, and which is basically course like. I did introduce it there, but I have significantly revised it. Very very proud of it, and um, have subsequently. <clears throat> published it um, not after not long after doing that I mean like within 24 hours of that I was notified by natural news that they would like me to contribute so um, if you're not familiar with natural news they're considered um, they're trying to they think a lot like I do basically there's an alignment there of thought processes which is to unveil <sighs> false false information or misleading information to shed light on what's not um, accurately being um, delivered <clears throat> that's how I would say it so the fact that I got introduced you know uh, uh, invited to participate or contribute with them says a lot and that says a lot about me because I am on the edge of of what is conventionally being talked about I was talking with somebody just yesterday, um, having had this, ex this life path of mine, I see things in a very scientific way. When it comes to the oils, I love them. I really, really recommend them. And then I also say, don't use them. If you don't know what, how they really work, you should not be using them. And the thing is, is that science knows how they work. This is how drugs, the majority of our drugs are being developed is the activity of plant constituents signaling molecules in the human body. Like as I mentioned, they have the ability to influence genetic activity, whether it's to turn something on or to turn something off. With over nearly 700, I'll say that, nearly 700 olfactory receptors in the body, 200 of them um, are understood at this point, how they function or what they actually do. They're still studying. This has only been within the last decade that they're really coming to terms with understanding how these things work. But they're located throughout the body. And, I mean, the lung tissue, the heart tissue, they're throughout the body. And these receptors are responsive to odorant-type chemicals. Well, um, if you want to know if a constituent in essential oils is an odorant chemical... Consider the fact that um, there's a number of biotechnology companies such as Sigma Aldrich is the big one I can think of. I know there's other ones out there that replicate these chemicals and they are being sold for things like fragrance um, and especially flavors. So you have an odor, okay? These olfactory receptors are responsive to these chemicals. And so when we have, you may say, well, they're replicating a plant constituent that that's different than a plant constituent. These are man-made chemicals at this point. Yes, there are some that are actually produced in labs using organic matter such as yeast. But think about this. Um, let's just say, for instance, um, alpha philandrine. Okay, it has a lemon lime kind of um, flavor to it. It's added to a lot of foods. Um, it's also known as an appetite stimulant. This would be the reason why you can't eat just one. But that said, alpha philandrine exists in many, many plants throughout nature. But it has a different, it has a more um, stabilizing effect because it's also generally balanced with beta philandrine. So there's, there's a given, you know what I'm saying? So there's a, um, a stability because it's, it does have an effect on the appetite. Absolutely. That's a, that's a hormonal activity because appetite is regulated by hormones. So when you have both alpha and beta philandry, now you have this, um, this give and take, okay? And nature is going to work with that because these things, these chemicals have different functions and they have our different influences. So they're going to balance each other out is what I'm trying to say. I was avoiding using that word because balance is relative as, my, as far as I'm concerned. Nonetheless, they do balance one another out or offer stability. Whereas when you're just adding one to food and it's grown in yeast, it's going to have a different energy to it. You might think that sounds a little crazy, but when alpha philandrine grows maybe um, in um, 
trying to think of a plant. Well, when it grows in one particular plant, um, doesn't necessarily, <clears throat> it, it's, it's combined with other, that's what I, how I want to say, it's combined with other constituents. And so the synergy of those constituents has an overall effect on the body. When you're growing alpha philandrine, say, in yeast, in a yeast culture, there's, there aren't any other chemicals, photo, um, plant constituents, to influence the synergy. It's a very specific action. And so nature responds differently. I'm not going to say one is good, one is bad. There's just different reactions that occur when you have a synergistic relationship of chemicals versus just a single chemical. The point that I'm getting at is that science, scientists, science as a field, understand a great deal about how these odorant chemicals actually work. Yet, on the other hand, we have a medical world and um, I don't even know what to call it anymore. <laughs> Besides medical, I mean, there's just a large collection of people involved with um, product development, marketing, medical care that there's, you know, there's the other side and they're promoting something completely different than what the, what science is actually understanding. And in many respects, I do understand why they are creating a lot of these things because while it's difficult to harvest just single constituents out of all these plants, it makes sense to try to replicate it. But the fact is, is that they are also recognizing in their research that there's a, there's a value to synergistic um, combinations or uh, yeah, there's a value to the synergistic relationship. And they're trying to replicate that as well. So ultimately what we're going to have is we're going to have man-made synergy versus natural, naturally occurring synergy. And all I can say is that the body is going to respond differently. Um, and so these are the kinds of things that I talk about here. Um, as you probably have already figured out, this is what I write about. And this is what I will be writing about with natural news as well. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And I will continue to publish my own material. Um, again, cutting edge trying to par you know trying to com demonstrate what is what you know what's been discovered how it's being how we are um, portraying a different idea I mean we're not there's there's not a there's not a uh, synergy between the two um, arenas if you get I guess what I'm trying I'm lost right now with what I'm what kind of word I want to come up with because it's a it's a corporate mentality on this side the corporate mentality is not ex not combining its knowledge with what science understands they're not I don't know if it's deliberate or if they're not keeping up with it but it's just not happening so what we have now is the right hand is not speaking to the left hand we have a lot of confusion and overwhelm and the and the general public sorry i just had tickles um so it's important to begin to understand from what i can say how to begin to work with all the chemicals that we have um at our fingertips um in our everyday life that's the reason why i have aromatherapy as a lifestyle class because and i'm still developing material for that like i said this last couple months has been very interesting there's been a different um direction that things have gone for me, which is very, very exciting. And at the same time, I'm very committed to continuing to develop that content um, because I, as I mentioned, I feel like people deserve to know how to best take care of their bodies because ultimately the body is, their body is at war with the environment. It's <clears throat> doing its best to defend you from the things that you're consistently exposed to and it's near next to impossible to go into a physician or a pharmacist or anybody and have them actually tell you what you specifically need especially with the amount of odorants i mean think about it just you know we don't even have to talk about cleaning material we can just think about just i mean just think about everything that has a fragrance added to it if we didn't have, I mean, I've talked historically about technology and the types of medications, you know, and technology involves chemistry or involves chemicals. 
And if we stop and think about the number of chemicals that we have introduced to this planet, um, to our cultures, to our communities, to our products, I mean, we are swimming in chemicals. Nature communicates via chemicals, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Signaling molecules are lipophilic chemicals. Those are chemicals that have the ability to influence genetic activity. Um, all factory receptors are G-coupled protein receptors, just like endocannabinoids, or the, endocannab the cannabinoid receptors, and many other receptors. Um, so, yeah, actually, if you join in Aromatherapy as a Lifestyle, you'll actually get a lot of inf more information than I ever anticipated sharing there. But there's, like, another course that I developed a couple years back called Breaking the Cycle of Disease Management. And th that's where I kind of go into a lot of what G-coupled protein receptors are. Those are massively important receptors that are influenced by none other than lipophilic chemicals. <clears throat> and so the olfactory receptors are some of those. Um, the point of this is that what brought me to even wanting to make this video is the fact that I have several people now, in just in the last week, that um, have been, you know, they've been using oils, or they just they don't think much of the oils because they don't know it. It's not that they don't like them; they just don't understand them. They are of the mindset, like a lot of people are, it's just fragrance, okay, or it's Bath and Body. My mission is to say, if you're using authentic essential oils, they are nothing close to Bath and Body or just fragrance. So I'm having to do a lot of coaching with some people around remembering to use them. And it made me stop and think because I am notorious for saying less is more. And I still mean that. However, when you're living with a serious health condition, two drops isn't going to do it. You have to... And then having, you know, a 10 ml bottle for six months is not going to improve any situation. And I'm talking about this because I've had several people that have had a 10 ml bottle for me that have literally sat on this bottle for months. And then they write to me and said, well, I was getting these symptoms, in this case, allergies. So I had to go to my doctor and was put on an allergy medication. Well, or I have somebody else that was um, having horrific um, PMS to the point where it was nauseating her and vomiting and she'd pass out. So they put her on birth control pills. Well, estrogen and progesterone aren't her only issue. It's a hormonal challenge, absolutely. But the reason why the estrogen and progesterone were a problem and related you know, to having such severe PMS issues had everything to do, number one, with nitric oxide synthase, not fully functional. It's been disrupted for, again, because of all of these endocrine disruptors in this world. Number two, the entire hormonal system is out of whack. It's not just estrogen and progesterone. And because I know this person happens to be a very touchy, feely, I got to hug you kind of person. I talked to her and I said, your issue isn't around just estrogen and progesterone. You're actually not producing enough oxytocin, which is the reason why you have higher levels of prolactin, yada, yada, yada. And she said that was the first time anybody's ever said anything to her like that, but it made absolute sense. So we put her on something and I had to encourage her to use these things in order to get above to, you know, so <clears throat> the person with the allergies, it was like, Something's changed in your environment, so you, uh, and your body is rebelling. It's okay to increase it. Here's the thing, guys. Essential oils are not going to cure what ails you in the sense that you're going to be scot-free of any symptoms. That's not how this is going to go. A curative, I did another video on this. A curative is an action that we take, but the fact is, is that he, I mean, and healing almost seems to be elusive. I mean, an illusion. We have to really come to peace within ourselves. And right now the body is, like I said, at war with the environment. So there's a lot of unrest. There's a lot of dis-ease. Even if you're not living with a chronic illness, there's still a level of dis-ease. And that dis-ease will continue to become worse. This is where oils come in and understanding how they not only affect 
genetic activity, they can actually also help with restoring that inner peace. But we have to stick with it. When we talk about less is more, maybe you only do it, you know, use them three or four times a day. Maybe just two or three times a day. Use more of it at one time. Again, if you're living with a chronic health issue, you have got to get, you've got to put on more and you've got to understand that these are helping you, but your body needs you to, you know, it's not just a single drop, okay? It means putting on a good amount and letting it absorb. It takes between 20 to 30 minutes for oils to metabolize throughout the body. If, again, a chronic health issue, we need to stay on top of it. And it's okay to use more of your product or more of your oils than you would think. I understand they're expensive, but the fact is, is that once you get on top of it, now you can begin to allow the body to stabilize. We're trying to get to a point of stability. As I said, healing almost seems to be an illusion at this point. And we're not, these curatives that we're seeking aren't really going to cure the body because there's something always happening in the environment. That's the point of this. Maybe new chemicals, maybe new pesticides, maybe new fertilizers, especially depending on some of these people that I know. They live in heavily um, fertilized and high levels of pesticides. So there's a lot of chemicals out there. And, and just so you know, some of these chemical companies, they have meetings with the people who administer these chemicals in the public, and they are definitely warned to wear their protective gear. So if they're being told to wear protective gear, then it's probably a good idea to get your protective gear, and that means using oils that are going to help keep you protected, going to help detox you or help your body to detox itself. That's what the body's wired to do, you know, um, but that's a whole nother topic. My point is, is that the oils actually um, do offer a lot of benefit. We just have to know how to work with them, and we have to remember that it is okay to use more, especially if symptoms start to, don't sit there and go, oh, it's not working anymore. And, and I mean, you don't, well, I say that, but if, I mean, if running to the doctor is what you want to do, then that's, that's your decision, and that's okay. But we have to realize that the, if we give these oils a chance and we stay on top of it and we use them to our advantage, I mean, really use them intentionally, we can rise above and we don't have to use as much. I am living proof that that is how it works. I've done this so many times with myself, do it all the time with myself as a matter of fact. People that I'm close to, they use oils and I have to remind them because it's not a normal practice. But the fact is, is that the more you do it, develop that habit, and if you, you know, like now, it's like I haven't even put oils on today because I just didn't feel like I, there's nothing, you know, that I need. I will put some on here in a little while because, again, my life is as it is. There's, you know, there's physical stress, there's mental stress, there's, you know, environmental factors. And so just honoring my body. If you look at essential oils as a way of honoring and creating stability and not as a curative that's the most important important part they're not don't look at them as your curative look at them as something that it's a re, um, representation of how you honor your body and you're including you're you're connecting with nature you're allowing the connection of nature to support your ability to thrive and help move you beyond survival mode, which is what this war is. It's all survival. So I'm going to leave you with that. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know. I do appreciate um, you watching and being with me on this. Um, for those of you who might be wondering, well, what kind of oils would I recommend if you live in an area that uses a lot of pesticides or fertilizers? Roman chamomile, um, celery seed, I'm trying to think of things that are safe. <laughs> so we have Roman chamomile, celery seed, 
Um, Cyprus. Um, if you don't take medications, uh, laurel leaf, also known as bay laurel, would be a good one. So that's Roman chamomile, <laughs> celery seed, um, cypress, and or laurel leaf. And um, goldenrod. One more time. Goldenrod, laurel leaf, or cypress. Laurel leaf only if you're not taking medications. That's it. So, and then, like I said, cypress, celery seed, and Roman chamomile. All right. So I hope that gives you an idea. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um, you can always email me, Tammy at synergessence.com. Until later, thank you guys. I love you, and I'll be back soon. Keep enjoying the weather wherever you are.